his journey now. Speaking of transfers and quarterbacks, Jaden Daniels of LSU won the Heisman Trophy on Saturday evening. Here's a note about the Heisman Trophy winners. In the last seven years, Daniels becomes the fifth transfer to win the Heisman Trophy. In the last seven years, Jaden Daniels is the fifth, including Caleb Williams, Joe Burrow, Kyler Murray, and Baker Mayfield. And now Jaden Daniels, who was, of course, has started the year or his career at Arizona State. So that's what the transfer portal, and even before there was a so-called transfer portal, graduate transfers, et cetera, that is five of the last seven, all of them, of course, quarterbacks who have won the Heisman Trophy. My vote, by the way, was Jaden Daniels. My second place vote went to uh, Michael Penix, Jr., and my third vote went to Marvin Harrison, the Ohio State wide receiver. I'd like to note that Jordan Travis came in fifth, which is uh, very worthy considering he, um, you know, his availability I changed a little college football. I players. saw somebody mention that they had, I think it might have been Brando, had uh, Jordan Travis like third and said, listen, if anybody can kick a 13 or no team out because of the lack of him on the roster, then he must be the best player in America in rate relating back to the college football playoff decisions a week ago. Well, this is very fitting. He finished uh, right on the outside of getting an invite to New York, yeah. like they finished uh, right on the outside of getting an invite to the college football playoff. So uh, being fifth is uh, just Florida State's fortune or misfortune uh, this year. But, uh, yeah, Jaden Daniels was very deserving. I was glad to see Penix, you know, got uh, a lot of respect as well. I thought he was worthy of that. We talked about that a bit on Friday. But, yeah, I, I think Daniels was uh, pretty – you know, easy choice for uh, a lot of the folks who watch college football this season, and I, I don't fault that. I, I had a little bit of an issue, really. It was anything. It was just like how it was a foregone conclusion. It was him, and I felt like Penix deserved at least a bit more consideration, um, but I, I don't think that they got it wrong in any way, shape, or form. Jaden Daniels was fantastic, um, and it turned out to be, you know, a, a tremendous year, even though it was a little bit different in that we didn't really care about his team too much, and usually the Heisman winner, the team's a bit more involved in the bigger picture. LSU, not so much. Um, but uh, they would have been nowhere close without him. Uh, they would have been nowhere even in probably bowl eligible without, well, without him. So he had a yeah an awesome year and a very deserving of that honor. Garrett, they were nine and three. Are nine and three correct? Correct. Nine and three. What would they be? And I know that you could do this with maybe Bo Nix at Oregon or perhaps Caleb. What would they be had they not had Jaden Daniels this year? Uh, I would probably give them six wins. Really? Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, here's a stat about Jaden Daniels. You, uh, you saw it flash up a minute ago from Garrett. The number of 20 yards or more plays in a single season the last five years, Jaden Daniels had even more than what was one of the great single seasons in college football history with Joe Burrow, Hurts at Oklahoma, Kenny Pickett at Pittsburgh, Bryce Young won the Heisman, and Caleb Williams even last year. And look at the number of games – 13, 14, and 15 games, and Daniels did that in 12. Yeah, um, he also, like, even though, like, Jalen Hurts and Bryce Young and Caleb Williams, all really good runners, um, Jane Daniels... He had over 1,000 yards rushing. Taking off on a 20-yard run was just kind of commonplace, especially on... Th I, I could not... You watch LSU, and I know Garrett reveled in this, but... It was almost like Mike Denbrock would trick the defense into playing everybody back on like a third and 12. <laughs> and then the, like Jaden Daniels gets the snap and he's like, well, I'm just going to run for this. There's nobody there for 26 yards. And then he just runs 26 yards straight out of bounds. And then the defensive coordinator on the other side is like, well, how did we forget about the leading rusher on the team? Or uh, why did we play back knowing yeah, well, he could I mean, run? Yeah. You know, like it was just, it was one of those things, you know, that it, it happened so ridiculously often. And that was like, other than the big plays he made with the wide receivers, that was the play that always got LSU out of a hole. Always was Jaden Daniels, like not a called run, just on a scramble. And there's no one there. There was just no one. And, you know, I, I could just see every like, hey, maybe you want to go get him. Like, he's just out there. Like, go stop him before he gets to the marker. But then nobody's even close to the marker. So, yeah, that doesn't surprise me. He had 90 in 12 games because he had at least two 20-yard runs a game. Uh, UW fan Jim Penix was the best player on the best team in the biggest moments. JD has great stats, terrible. Um, Mr. Guy, if Penix put up bigger numbers, he would have won that award for sure. 
I, I have a Heisman vote. No one's going to bother me if you disagree with me. I, I, it was hard. It is hard, absolutely difficult to make those decisions, but that was my vote, and I publicly tell you that because that's what I voted for, or who I voted for, one, two, and three. Who was three? Uh, Marvin Harrison. I don't. Did you mention that? I don't. Yeah, okay. I just did a minute ago. Yeah, yeah. I, Marvin Harrison of Ohio State. Okay. Well, yeah. I think uh, you can make that argument and go in circles as far as the top two go. And uh, I don't really think you can go wrong if you pick Penix. I think that was a proper pick. That's why I kind of was fighting for him on Friday. Um, but again, I don't fault anybody for selecting Jalen Daniels. Had a great year. Um, LSU's not where they are without him, certainly. And um, you know, he had some eye popping stats. Did mention on Friday that you know. Some of that was very much at the end of games where they were forcing stats down people's throats to polish that up, but uh, I don't think that that takes away entirely, and that wasn't how he accumulated all of those. Um, again, really great player, uh, much deserved. I do think Penix had a case, but you know, only one guy can hold the trophy, so um, uh, good job and uh, congratulations to uh, the LSU Tigers on a, another Heisman Trophy winner. UW fan, Huskies would have lost half of their games without Penix, yep. possibly. Uh, and then we mentioned that maybe LSU would have lost even more than they did. Also, Sir Blah Blah Blah, uh, Travis, uh, some pointed out that he should have won because the committee basically made him the most important player in college football. I completely agree with you on that, too. Uh, and then also, uh, UW fan, how did Daniels play in the huge clutch games? Oh, they had none. You're right. Well, he did your feedback, he, but he, they had a they had a handful of pretty big games. Yeah, but he like I think the knock on Daniels was that he lost to the three best teams they played. Yeah. He lost to FSU, he lost to Bama, he lost to Ole Miss. Those are the three best teams he played. Now, look, he didn't. Uh, he got knocked out of the Bama game. He didn't play poorly against Ole Miss. It was not his fault they lost to Ole Miss. He played really well. In fact, I think uh, of those 90, 20-yard plays, like 61 of them were against Ole Miss. It just – Ole Miss made 62 uh, <laughs> in that game. But uh, he he played well in that one, uh, played well in the first half against FSU, and then that the defense, you know, clamped down. So, you know, I, I mean, when you're looking at – it's a hard thing. Like, it's really hard – um, you know, look, um, if you can see if you want to do that, then you can look at Michael Penix had some, you know, kind of average games against some, some of the lesser opponents in the Pac 12 as well. So, Jay you know, Daniels threw for the same amount of yards as Travis did in that loss to Florida State. I even made this comment that yeah. I thought that he was the Heisman winner that first game. I know I would never make that decision early. Uh, Travis threw for four touchdowns in that game. Daniels ran for 64. So in the loss to Florida State and FSU just overwhelmed LSU in the second half. Yeah. So I mean, it, like he he played he played at a consistent level every time. And I think that if you're going to split hairs on like okay, he lost these games. Well, you know. Washington made some big plays and won some close games against teams that they probably should have been as close against, or you're probably looking at the same kind of exact season for Penix. And so, yeah, that's why it gets hard. Like, I don't like to split yeah. hairs. Like, vote for who you're going to vote for and see what happens. I mean, the big difference is the running ability of Jane Daniels. That's where yeah. – go look at the running stats. That's clearly where the big difference is. You're running for 200 yards in the same game. You're throwing for 200, 300-plus yards and multiple touchdowns, running and passing. That's where he separated himself as the most outstanding player – in college football, and it's much like the playoff. It's subjective. Some people choose best player, best team. Some people choose best player. Doesn't matter. Jaden Daniels won it. Um, Michael Penix has had a great year. Um, if I was a UW fan, I would be more content with a national championship anyways and wouldn't give a damn about the Heisman if the Huskies are hosting the or hoisting the uh, trophy at the end of the year. So Penix still has plenty to pay for, play for, um, but he was certainly deserving of the recognition and – um, he got the, the second most votes, and I think that's uh, about right in the long run. So, yeah, um, I think uh, both players very deserving of a lot of attention that they got. Hey, Penix is a fantastic story, great story. Washington now focuses on Texas, which they have been for the last – well, even though last week was kind of an off week in certain ways, and then Michigan-Alabama in the semifinals. Paxton said, how did Ollie Gordon win the Doak Walker Award? Well, besides being smartass and saying he had more votes, who should have won? And, and Paxton thinks Schrader should have won the uh, Doak Walker Award. I, I, I don't know. I don't know what the voting was. I know Schrader, I think, may have been the runner-up to Ollie Gordon for the 